We have an update from one of our sponsors, the Vegas Near Me app. They are constantly working to add more information. We tell you that all the time. The app is free. We also tell you that. But gosh, when we get these updates, it really is incredible how much information is inside. Yeah, Vegas Near Me has recently partnered with Vegas.com to get you the best prices on show tickets. In fact, they have over a thousand shows listed inside the app. And also, we know sometimes you need a quick break or a familiar go-to when you're in Las Vegas. And they do have more than 1,400 chain restaurants and stores listed in there. They have more than 8,000 individual locations, so you can find them. We're talking Walgreens, Starbucks, you know, fast food, you name it. And we all love to save money, don't we? Well, Vegas Near Me is going to help with that, too. Right now, they're offering 50% off of shows at Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club, Plus, a $99 bottle package at Crazy Horse 3 for up to four people, including transportation. Yeah, that's a good deal. And there's lots of other deals in there, too. So get in and look around. Vegas Near Me is free. You don't have to put in your email. Download it in the Google or Apple App Store. Hours, locations, even the length of shows are in there. It's really good. You can even find live music, kid-friendly activities, maps of inside the hotels and casinos. It really is a lot of information in your hand. It is Vegas near me. Download it today. It's episode 195 of Vegas Revealed. Monday's Dark is celebrating 10 years of giving back and live entertainment in Las Vegas. We sit down with the host and creator, Mark Chinook, this episode. We fill you in on what he has in store for the 10-year celebration that's taking place at the Palms on Monday, December 11th. We also talk entertainment, sports, F1, and favorite Las Vegas places. That's this week on Vegas Revealed, plus a big shout out to our sponsors, Hotworks Infrared Fitness Studio and the Vegas Near Me app. And a shout out to our subscribers. We appreciate each and every one of you. All right, let's do it now. Spin that wheel. Well, welcome, everyone. Listen, we're doing things a little bit different today because we are interviewing our friend Mark Chinook, who has been here in Las Vegas for a very long time. Um, We've been here a little longer than Mark, so we were here for your big arrival, like when you were born into Vegas. That's right. Rock of Ages days. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, Mark was uh, in Rock of Ages over at the Venetian for a long time. Uh, You have a resume that's like this long. Um, uh, Right now, you're, you're... the MC for Top Rank? Yeah, is MC host. the right title? It's a good host. word. Host. Yeah. yeah, I do all the press conferences, weigh-ins, and all the ring announcing for Top Rank. Spoiled. Yeah, and you do yeah. all the entertainment for um, the Golden Knights games. You're great. We see you up there and getting people to really crank it to open up the games <laughs> and all the in, you know the in-house entertainment. Um, the, the list goes on. Yeah, and by the way, we are uh, coming to you this week from a studio inside of the space here in Las Vegas. It's an entertainment venue that Mark created. Gosh, how long has it been now? Uh, We are going to celebrate, I think, eight years of existence here at the space. Uh, And this is just something that started to come together as of late. It's a podcast studio in the back corner of the facility. So to have you guys here is really special for for myself and our entire team at the space who's here helping record this episode. Yeah. you know, before we even get into it, like the way you started was it actually made me feel like goosey, <laughs> goose bumpy, because Vegas is special. And you guys have continuously supported everything that I've had my hand in, whether it's like you said, Rock of Ages or the Golden Knights or Top Rank or Monday's Dark, the space. You've always supported. You've always allowed me to uh, come on your platform mm-hmm. and talk about what we have going on. And so this is such a, a cool moment for me. So thank you, thank you, thank you for, for coming here and allowing us to talk all things. It's, it's special. You guys have been rock stars in the community since day one, uh, and I've been here 11 years now. Mm-hmm. And so 11 years ago when Rock of Ages opened, you guys were the, the first ones to say, hey, Shana, come on, get over here. <laughs> yep. And uh, this is awesome. So thank you. Of course, of course. Yeah, I remember having Mark, you know, and I'm sure you do too, in studio when we were in full-time TV. And I remember being at the first Monday's Dark. So, I mean, and we're (laughs) going to talk Monday's Dark. We've got so much to talk about. You're having a special 10-year 
anniversary celebration of Monday's Dark, and we want to get to all that, and we're going to explain what Monday's Dark is. We had a couple things we wanted to talk to you about, though, before we get into that, just because yeah. it is F1 weekend when this podcast drops, yeah. and you are so heavily involved in the sports community, so we wanted your take. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. what is your take on having... I mean, this is a, another global sporting event that will have the eyes of the world on Las Vegas. Um, what is your perspective? It's on pretty the race? remarkable, mm -hmm. in my opinion, what's what's happened over just the last six months, let alone the eleven years I've been here. Uh, like you said, F one is global, yeah, and it's a market. It's a fan base that I don't think has experienced Vegas in the way they're about to experience Vegas. Yes, there have been some hiccups and some, uh, I don't know how you call it, for us locals, uh, some frustrations, some frustrations <laughs> headaches. But I think it's just another piece of the pie that makes this city so special. And I am so excited for the week ahead. Uh, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Like, the, they're running out of room at the airport. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, as much as that's a headache, that's a kind of a cool problem in my book. I always, I'm an optimist, right, at heart. So I try to look at the positive all the, of all the things. There's a lot of negative comments on social media right now about the F1 week ahead. But I think the reward uh, will significantly outweigh the negative. And I hope that it will get easier and easier every year because this is a 10-year deal. Yeah. So it's not going anywhere. Uh, so hopefully it gets easier on us who call Vegas home. Yeah. Uh, and they work out the kinks. Well, I know... Uh, Dana is of the same mindset. I she am. went on Instagram the other day saying, yeah. come on, all you naysayers. Uh, Put just, it to bed for a minute I'm and just find it. a glimmer yeah. of positivity. Yeah. It's I like think that's ev important. Every social media post is negative. And I know it's been frustrating, especially for people who work on the strip. Mm -hmm. You know, I get it. They're in and out of work. But it's like, okay, we're going into F1 week. Let's see what happens. Let's see what this is like. I have a feeling we're all going to have chills once this is over. And we watch, whether we're watching it on TV, in person, and we watch this race at 10 p.m. Pacific time on Saturday. Yeah, you guys know better than anybody, those who work in television are just magicians, right? Yeah. And they are going to make that race look sensational mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. So yes, it may be a little cumbersome or a little clustery for yeah. us, <laughs> but what we see on television for years to come or just even the days preceding the event or after the event, it, it's going to look incredible. Yeah. And these cars whipping down the strip at 200 miles an hour and they're passing by the Bellagio and those grandstands that were built. Yes, they are ugly grandstands, but they will not be there forever <laughs> and the strip will go back to looking the way we're accustomed to it looking. Yeah. So I think it's well worth it and I, I can't wait to see the community of F1 supporters roll into town Spend all that money, baby. Mm -hmm. Go to those restaurants. Go to those shows. Rent those rooms. Book those rooms. Spend the money in Vegas. Yeah. We need it. You know, and that <laughs> trickle-down effect, I think, is going to, uh, we're going to feel it. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to have to give up, you know, like locals are like, well, it's not for us. It's like, well, we're going to have to give up a weekend to have all these new people and get eyes on Las Vegas, and then hopefully others can go there. And I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think we'll just have to see how it goes. And I never even mentioned, when I did that post on social media, the amount of response I got in direct message, I was shocked. Everyone's like... Uh, the response was was I had dozens of messages of people saying I'm excited about it, yeah. and I'm like, well, where have you all been? Like, where is everyone? <laughs> Unless you're just not in my algorithm, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> so there's anyway. been a lot of naysayers, yeah. but that's okay. You know, there's always there's haters, right? Yeah. Hater, haters gonna hate always, and they're uh, the loud voices too. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Yeah. You know, and it's okay. I think it's a it's a sensational thing for the the city. Mm -hmm. Pro sports has has taken over, as you guys know. We are now known as mm -hmm. the sports and entertainment capital of the world. And it's the best of the best. I, I'm so proud to call Las Vegas home. I've been here 11 years. We have the best restaurants, the best shows. We now have championship winning sports teams with yeah. our aces and the Golden Knights. Hopefully the Raiders can get us a Super Bowl. And, you know, Major League Baseball and the National Basketball Association, they're right around the corner. Mm -hmm. So to have F1 come here and put, a, put Vegas uh, as a stop for the next decade, that says everything that you need to know right there about the city. And I've been a big proponent of, when I talk about Las Vegas, it's not the buildings, it's not the restaurants, yeah. it's not the resorts, it's the people. Yeah. So the reason why F1 is here is because we have amazing people who call this city home and make it go. So forget being negative, if you look at it in that sense, F1 is rewarding this city 
because of the amazing people who make it go. Right. The people at the top making these decisions. These are great people who call Las Vegas home mm -hmm. and they've busted their ass for all these years now. And now we're getting a premier sporting event that's not just North American based. It's global. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is global stuff. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm really excited for it. Well, I'm curious. You grew up in, in Canada. Yep. Um, in Ontario, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you were just north of us yeah in Rochester from New York. Rochester New York yeah um, was is car racing big in Canada uh, if you can get out and shovel the driveway <laughs> and throw some salt down yes get the chains on the tires unfortunately I think the racing that I was privy to as a kid growing up was a snowmobile racing around a track that was around a couple trees yeah right. you know so no we didn't have uh, we didn't have racing sports in Canada revolves around our Canadian pastime which yeah. is which is hockey yeah you know you're born with skates on men and women you know boys and girls everybody plays the game of hockey um, and don't forget you know I think sometimes you know I've been in the United States 25 years now people forget that the entire population of Canada is essentially the same as the population of California. Right. You know, there are about 33 million people who live in Canada, yeah. and they all live within a 100-mile radius of the U.S. border. Mm -hmm. After that, it's a little tundra-esque. It is. Gosh. <laughs> but, but hockey is our pastime, man, and that's why, you know, when, when I was doing Rock of Ages and our owner, Mr. Foley, said, hey, I want to bring a pro team here, I cold called his office. I've been working alongside Bill Good. Foley in some way for nine years. Our team is celebrating its seventh season. I was on that Vegas Wants Hockey Committee nine years ago helping bring a pro NHL franchise to Vegas. Mm. And then you're part of a Stanley Cup. I mean, witnessing that must have been, we know what it felt like just watching it, I mean, and being a part of it, but you yeah. being in there, I mean, that must have just been incredible. Yeah, I was able to bring my dad out and my two of my older brothers. Mm. Um, you know, I'm the youngest of five. My parents are, are still amazing in their early 80s. So my dad came down, two brothers came down, and hockey's been a part of our family for as long as I can remember. My father uh, was a dentist by trade, uh, but in the 80s acquired a, a hockey team in our hometown, the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, yeah. which is a junior hockey franchise. He was able to save the team from being relocated and bought them from Phil and Tony Esposito, which are hockey legends who played mm -hmm. in the National Hockey League but are from my hometown. And so hockey's been in our DNA as a family forever. And so to have that come full circle as a Broadway kid who then started working in sports to being on the ice in game five and having the chance to witness the Stanley Cup uh, be hoisted by a team you work for, it was a pretty special moment. And uh, mm -hmm. it's something that we won't forget as a family. You know, having my dad there is something we'll Cute. never forget. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's an amazing remarkable. moment yeah. to be able to have. Mm -hmm. And then I, you were out there hoisting the the cup on the <laughs> ice too. It was it was crazy how it happened. You know, I was on the ice doing interviews, and producer in my ear just said, "Hey, Chinook, you're wrapped." So I'm just standing out there like a kid in a candy store, watching players skate around with the trophy, and and wives, and families, and coaches, and trainers. And then sure enough. One of our trainers had the Stanley Cup, and he saw me standing there. He yells, he goes, Chinook, yeah. you're next. I don't remember who I threw my microphone to, but there was that moment where I grabbed that cup, and I'm like, yeah. Oh, my and, gosh. You know, it was amazing because I was facing where my, my family was sitting, and I could see them, and they could see me. With It was just, again, like I said, it's a moment that you can't explain. And it's something that I'll just remember for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I wanted to hoist it as a player. You know, as a kid growing up in Canada, that was always my dream to, to hoist the Stanley Cup as a player. Um, but this is pretty close. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, you've gotten a lot in in 10 years. A lot has happened in your life. I remember yeah. being at your party for, for your citizenship yeah. over at the Hard Rock. That's that was a great true. party, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was a fun night. But yeah. I remember that happened. I mean, and just so much has evolved and you've made Las Vegas home. You could have stayed in L.A., right? But yep. you decided to move here and make it home because you loved it so much. And you've really just, I mean, uh, done so much for the community and charity. Charity is something that's important to you. So you're out there working. You're hustling. But um, we have a lot of organizations in this town of ours outside of the Strip that do a lot of good things. And I know what was big for you when you started Monday Stark was giving some publicity to some of the smaller mm -hmm. organizations, right? Yeah. You guys know better than anybody, too, that Vegas is red carpet happy, yeah. right? They'll roll out a red carpet <laughs> for the opening of Applebee's <laughs> in summer. <laughs> Team behind the window is like, Chinook, if you use that joke one more time, we're going to turn the lights off. 
but it's the, it's the truth. And as a performer at the time, when we first got out here, we were in Rock of Ages. I'd have to go to the dressing room at five o'clock, put the mullet wig on, the goofy t-shirt, and they'd drive us to a charity event. And because we had a show at eight o'clock every night, all we would do is walk the carpet, take a picture, and leave. And that was my introduction to sort of the giving scene in Vegas yeah. when we first got here. And I was like, this is bizarre. I can't even stay for your party or your event, your gala. I have to go back and do a show. So why am I doing this? Why am I, I to be honest, I hated getting the costume on, having to go to work so right. early and go to this event that I didn't even know anything about. So that's why my wife and I started Monday's Dark. The name comes from the fact that it's traditionally dark on Monday for the Broadway shows. So we didn't have a show on Monday night. And so I just started meeting all the entertainers in town and saying, hey, if I threw a party on Monday night, would you come and do what you do, which is perform? I don't need you to walk a carpet or put on a goofy, put your costume on. You're going to come and sing something that you never have done before yeah. or something new that's not in your show. And let's raise money and give it all away. And here we are celebrating a decade of doing that. We've thrown 181 parties. We've never repeated a nonprofit. Each charity gets 10,000 bucks. We've raised over two million with various events that we've hosted outside of Monday's Dark here at the space, but Monday's Dark specifically has partnered with 181 nonprofits and they've all received 10,000 bucks and a bunch of awareness, like you said, mm -hmm. the smaller groups. And today we have a wait list of over 300 waiting for a Monday's Dark party. Hmm. So it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it really- Crazy how it's grown. It really is. And I mean, I remember when you first had your when you had your first Monday's dark and <laughs> yeah. you know I've been over here for several yeah. several shows um over the last 10 years what have what are some of the standout moments for you because I know things can get crazy yeah. up on stage that's a great question and what's awesome is our entire team has been going through archives and we're brainstorming ideas for our 10th anniversary of yeah. what to share uh, one thing we will share at the 10th anniversary and I think this will, will resonate with you guys. Uh, our second, first or second Monday's Dark ever was at the Hard Rock. Robin Leach was a big supporter yeah. of Monday's yep. Dark, right? And, you know, we miss him dearly. Mm -hmm. Just like you guys, he was so supportive of everything entertainment based in Vegas and just wanted everybody to be successful. He understood that if you had the drive and hustle in Vegas, the city would embrace you and support you. And he was, he, he just lived that. Mm -hmm. So when Monday's Dark started, I asked Rob and I said, hey, would you do something for me? I got this idea for a segment. And when we don't do this segment anymore, but Craigslist was very popular oh, when yeah. we first started Monday's Dark. <laughs> and on Craigslist, there's a missed connections posting place where you can go on and say, hey, Dana, I saw you on the bus last Tuesday. I'm not sure if you're gonna see this, but I really should have asked you out and I didn't have the nerve. So if you see this, I was the guy in the baseball cap and the black t-shirt, <laughs> message me. And so it was this whole thing on Craigslist called Missed Connections. And so I would read a Missed Connection as part of the show. I would find really either Good raunchy ones, ones right. or, <laughs> no. you know, or no. you know, whatever. And so we would read them. And so one show, it was like the first or second show, I said, Robin, would you do me a favor in your beautiful accent, in you know, your, your most famous lifestyles of the rich and famous, will you read this Missed Connection for us? So up comes Robin Leach on stage, sits in a stool. We hit him with a special spotlight. He's in the dark. Kenny Davidson is playing beautiful underscored music. And he goes on to read this misconnection of a guy who accused a woman of breaking wind or farting, as you will, in the bread section of Trader Joe's. And she's wafting ciabatta bread. And I'm not doing it justice because I don't have Robin's beautiful right. accent. Oh yeah, it's But great. we have that footage. And we've, we've pulled it and we're gonna re-air it at the 10th anniversary event in honor of Robin helping us establish yeah. Yeah. what is now household in the philanthropic community. We might not be household to the general public, but if you work in nonprofit or charity work in Las Vegas, you've heard of Monday's Dark. Yeah. And it's those little moments that when I look back on 10 years to see how far the show has come, mm -hmm. first of all, like just the structure and format and the crew and the amazing people who volunteer their time to make it happen, there have been some pretty funny moments. There's yeah. been some, I've, you know, listen, I've had too many drinks at various Monday's <laughs> Darks. We've had guests get up on stage unannounced. We've had puppeteers show up. And it's just been, it's just been awesome to yeah. look back on the decade of, of what we've done. But that's one moment that 
you know, is special to us, especially in the industry that we're in here in Vegas as, you know, entertainers and hosts and personalities. Robin yeah. was such a, a big part of that. And we're excited to put that back up on the screen. That's in great. December. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was saying. I mean, when you when somebody might be listening to this, and I just want to back up a little. I, yeah. You know, Monday's dark. We it's on Mondays when shows are dark. You have performers come and put on a show. You usually have a theme. What it's twenty bucks to get in the door. Yeah. Just because we kind of never went over. And then if anyone doesn't know that, and maybe you're visiting in town and you're here on a Monday, I mean, just what you, just saying, Robin Leach to us, we're like, oh, Robin Leach was our buddy, right? But he's known all over the yeah, world. Icon. I mean, you icon. could rub yeah. shoulder. You could have ro- rubbed shoulders with Robin Leach, but uh, many other people just sure. pop in. Mm-hmm. So it's it's an event where you never know who's going to show up too. Yeah, you're you're speaking the language. And <laughs> yeah, that's awesome because yeah. you got it right. Yeah. and that's just us ten years in town doing it. It is essentially for people listening who have never heard about it. It is a ninety minute variety show every other Monday. You never know who's going to show up. It's twenty bucks. One hundred percent of the ticket proceeds and the silent auction go to a different nonprofit every other Monday. Mm -hmm. And we've had the likes of Shania Twain, Brad Garrett, Mm -hmm. Louis Anderson's another one who's no longer with us, who did comedy for us. Geechee Guy, who's a local Mm -hmm. entertainer who just recently passed. It's unfortunate that I've referenced three amazing entertainers who are no longer with us. We've lost a lot of people over the last three years. We've lost a lot of people. But you never know who's going to show up. It's adult. You know, it's off the cuff. It's, you know, it's Carol Burnett meets Jimmy Kimmel meets Saturday Night Live right. with a full band. Yeah. And that's what's cool about Vegas, right? Is people are coming through this town all the time. So you never know who's here. And uh, we're just, I feel, even though we're like 10 years old, we are 10 years old, I feel like we're just scratching the surface. Mm-hmm. And there's so much more we can do to help this great city. Uh, because to have 300 nonprofits on a wait list and have already supported 180, that says a lot mm-hmm. about how many amazing people in Las Vegas are committed to a cause of mm-hmm. some sort, right? That's a lot of great giving people yeah. living in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a big need. I mean, you're yeah. like, I'm like 180 charities. Like we <clears throat> have them for a reason, you know? Yeah. There's a need out there, that's yeah. for sure. So, And tell us about the 10-year anniversary. For folks that want to buy tickets and go to the Palms, what kind of, yeah. are you going to kick it up a little bit? It's going to be a little bit yeah. more special than normal, but it, kind of normal? It's always, yeah. we, try to, we try to do the best of the best, you know, for the 10th anniversary. There's a lot of business that has to get taken care of, but it is a true variety show. We're leaving the space because obviously we want to celebrate and get as many people into a room as possible. So the the amazing people at the Palms who run that organization, run that resort, have opened up the Pearl Theater for us, which is a gorgeous, it's one of my favorite venues in town. The the technology in there, the intimacy of the feeling of it. We're going to have 2,000 locals in the building. Uh, 42 local nonprofits will be represented. So we partner with 21 charities a year. We're going to celebrate the 21 charities from 2023, and we'll announce the 21 charities for 2024 that night for the first time ever. Uh, it's 20 bucks, and all of the money will go towards the productions of 2024. So this is the only time of year where Monday's Dark does a fundraiser for itself. Mm-hmm. So we partner with 21 charities a year. We give away you know, over $200,000 in cash every year, a bunch of awareness. But this is the year, or this is the, the party every year where we celebrate Monday's Dark, celebrate the team, the volunteers, all the charities. There's a huge auction. There's a live auction component, which we normally don't do. And uh, the show itself will be bananas. Yeah, We fun. have some of the best shows on the Strip represented um, we, you know, we can talk about a few that have, have yeah. been, the, the folks from Cirque du Soleil have committed to be present. Great. The folks from Spiegel World are going to have a presence. Oh, um, two <laughs> amazing shows uh, that, you know, one that I had, was a part of for a little while, Magic Mike Live, will be there. A uh, brand new uh, burlesque show called Ladylike from uh, Virgin yeah. will be there as well. And then a ton of entertainers that have donated their time and talent time and time again here at the space. They'll be there. Um, we started with Rock of Ages. I've got a little Rock of Ages surprise Uh-oh. up my sleeve. Um, oh, is the mullet so Tom making a Cruise? comeback? Oh, oh, I thought Tom, Tom Cruise was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give him a call. Hey, Tom, Tom, if you're watching, if Tom Cruise is watching, or if somebody knows Tom Cruise, we want to- Tom. Tom. Bring a motorcycle to the yes. Pearl. Jump off the um, building, yeah. whatever you got to do to get in there. Yeah, Parachute right. in. Yeah, so we try to always... You know, present the best of the best, or not necessarily the best of the best, but just we try to heighten the whole overall experience because a lot of people come to this one more so than the smaller events throughout the year. So I I always tell our team it's almost like a coming out party for us every December because we get this opportunity to preach out to 2,000 people 
and to those watching on the stream. So we live stream it for free. So a lot of eyes get put on it because it's a, it's a well-publicized, marketed event. It's our 10th anniversary, so it's a big one. So we wanna, we wanna do some special things. I love it. So a decade in, you've obviously lived the experience of, of growing Monday's Dark from the ground up. What does the next decade and beyond look like for you guys? I think it's just, it's continuing on the mission of giving. Everything we do at Monday's Dark and the space starts with the core value of giving back to the community. So nothing takes place at the space that doesn't have some sort of give back to the community. I say this a lot in my meetings, 50 million people come to Las Vegas every year mm -hmm. and they have a wonderful time. They get the best service, the best experiences. Who's responsible for serving those who serve? And the space and Monday's Dark wants that responsibility even more. So when the, the tourists leave and there are pit bosses and dealers and servers and entertainers and wardrobe and professionals and first responders and uh, veterans, everybody who makes that strip go and actually has a say in how those 50 million are treated, the space and Monday's Dark wants the responsibility of making sure we're doing our part in taking care of those who serve. Mm -hmm. And you guys fall into that category for what you do with your show and, and promoting all of the things you promote. Who looks after you guys right. when times are tough or if you need help? That's what the space and Monday's Dark wants to do even more moving forward. So we have some things in the works that are uh, expanding our programming, expanding our reach to our nonprofit partners that are, I think, going to be really well received by the community. But that's kind of our new sort of internal conversation and dialogue that's happening now is that the space in Monday's Dark really wants to be at the forefront for serving those who serve. Mm -hmm. And and that's a, that's a wonderful thing to talk about in Vegas because we are so service-oriented. And I think sometimes we forget about the two and a half million people who live here. They need help just like everybody else. And when I was just doing Rock of Ages and I was just an actor on the strip, it was my job on stage to make people forget about their problems for two or three hours when they walked it, well not three hours in that theater, but when they walk into that theater and the lights go out, my job is to make them forget about the BS in their life. We need to do the same thing for people who live in and breathe Vegas. And that's, that's really the next step for us and we've got some cool things that we'll talk about uh, in mid-2024, hopefully, fingers crossed, we get our, our stuff together in time that we can make some formal announcements by mid to late next year. We'll come back around yes. and be waiting for those announcements. Yeah. 100%. And we'll have links and everything in our show notes if you want to get tickets, Please. you want more information about Monday's Dark in general, the 10th anniversary, any of, any of that stuff. December 11th. I don't even know that I said oh, the yeah, date, but it's didn't. Monday, December 11th at the Pearl Theater, doors at 7, show at 8, 2,000 people in the room. Where am I looking? Right there. Yep. Come. 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 20 bucks. <laughs> all the money goes to charity, and it's all about Vegas on December 11th at the Palms. You, you've been a part of the entertainment community, which has switched into sport. I'm curious your takes. We don't get to sit with a lot of people who have been here kind of as long as we have. Um, what um, And in seeing things evolve, what do you think of the changes in just um, Las Vegas entertainment on the Strip and for our visitors that come in? Um, the entertainment's changed a little bit. Now we've got more... I don't know. We don't have a lot of medium-sized shows. We only have, you know, big residency. I mean, what is your feeling on some of this stuff? I would agree with you. Yeah. I think, you know, our entertainment lineup right now is headliner-based, yeah. which is fine. You know, I'm not going to complain. Yeah. Like, you can go see a different mega star every night of the week here. Uh, but I, I, I'm starting to see a little bit of what you were just hinting at creep back in. True. Major properties, putting a little more attention to smaller rooms, developing smaller rooms, mm -hmm. even lounges and, and areas of major resorts are starting to get programmed again where we got away from that. Yeah. So I think that's a great sign because I don't think, A, everybody can afford to go see U2 at the Sphere. Yeah. I haven't even been there yet and I looked at tickets and I was like, oh my gosh, they're 2500 bucks. <laughs> right. That's a very specific clientele, right? Yeah. That's a very specific fan base going to that show. So I, I, I'm starting to see the smaller show start to pop up. And it's not so much a show as it's an experience. There's a lot of immersive stuff happening. Um, and so I think we're on that trajectory where we're going to start to balance out again, where we are going to have all these mega stars. Mm -hmm. But it's a great thing. Like even Kylie Minogue, who's now yeah. taken over 
uh, the Venetian. That's actually yeah, our yeah. old showroom. Yeah. And that just shows you how long it's taken the Venetian to figure out what to do with that room. That room kind of sat dormant for six years. Mm -hmm. They did a couple things here and there, but for six years after Rock of Ages closed, there wasn't really a residence yeah. in there. But now what they've done from a an investment standpoint to the room is they've taken what once was a 2,000 seat proscenium traditional theater, style yeah. theater to this really cool, immersive, intimate venue that doesn't seat 2,000 anymore, mm -mm. and it's gorgeous. So I think you're gonna see more of those things start to pop up. Listen, even Circus Circus is getting a redo. So <laughs> they're getting the SpongeBob ride. SpongeBob ride. Let's, let's go. You know, like when they <laughs> announced Circus say. Circus is getting an almost what did they announce? A billion dollar renovation. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, let's go. Like that. If, if, if there was a property on the strip that needed a billion dollar renovation, it's that one. But I'm excited to see because again, there's a different client base, right? But now they're going to experience a brand new vibe of Circus Circus. That's cool. And I think you buried the headline with the, the Kylie Minogue stuff. Right. You know, transforming that space where you performed. You essentially paved the way for Kylie Minogue to be in Las Vegas. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, that's right. You've heard it here first. <laughs> heard it first. On <laughs> Vegas it's Revealed. True. It's true. Rock of Ages was responsible for Kylie Minogue coming to Vegas. Uh, no, I just, I love what they've done with that room. The pictures that I have seen so far are absolutely stunning. I can't wait to go see that show. Yeah. I know. Us too. Us yeah. too. We've seen yeah. a lot and that's one we haven't seen yet. Yeah. So. Hey, listen, we do a segment uh, where we give tips every week. So we're going to, we're going to do that, but we're, you're going to stay here and you're going to help us with our tips. Okay. okay. So let's do some tips. <laughs> Okay, so Mark, the premise of this segment is that we offer insight to all of our listeners about uh, places that they should go that are off the beaten path, uh, ways to get around Las Vegas a little easier, <laughs> uh, ways to save a buck if that's even possible How to these get days. Free, yeah, people like free stuff. So, yeah. if there are any tips that you have for people who are ready to come and do Vegas. Do you have any like insider tips? I was thinking something for you. You probably go to the airport a lot. Do you have any like? Mm. Definitely get TSA pre-check and clear. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm on about eight flights a month. So yes, my, my air miles are great. Get pre-check and clear. My tip would be to anybody coming to Las Vegas that's not from here to venture off of the strip. Uh, we have so many incredible restaurants uh, owned and operated by local chefs that have really made Vegas a culinary scene unlike any other. And I don't think it gets the credit it deserves. And to just drop a few names, James Trees, Gina Marinelli, Mark Marone, Brian Howard. So La Strega in Summerlin is one of my favorite mm -hmm. Italian restaurants. Uh, Sparrow and Wolf on Spring Mountain, Brian Howard, one of my favorite restaurants. Uh, Super Cash, Graffiti Bow, Mark Marone, amazing restaurant. Um, Esther's Kitchen, downtown James Trees, one of my favorite restaurants. So my tip for people not from Vegas coming here that are staying on the Strip, get off the Strip and see what makes this city so special outside of that pocket. Mm -hmm. One of the best little things that I always use, because when, when we did Rock of Ages, people were like, do you live at the Venetian? Oh my you, know, you guys get that, I'm yes. sure, a lot. Do you live, do you live at Caesar's Palace? <laughs> yeah. um, Caesar lived here, right? Caesar, Caesar Palace. Um, go see the neighborhoods that make this city what they are. You know, Henderson's incredible. The Southwest pocket of Vegas is booming. Yeah. Summerlin's gorgeous. So go off the strip. That's my tip. Yeah, I love that. And you know, um, I don't know why, just because you were a little funny there, it made me think. Um, <laughs> just a little funny. Just a little funny. <laughs> Work on that, would you? Sean and I. Keyword, key little. You were funny, but well, just no, a little. I'm getting something really complimentary here. Little. Hold on, uh -huh. let's, let's wait. <laughs> Sean and I MC a lot of events, but we have kind of like, you know, people know us as like on TV. We have to be a little nicer, but I must say, uh, I just want to mention that Sean and I have also been at many events at UMC. And every time we leave, we are cracking up at how funny you were. So, and I love a little raunch that you throw mm -hmm. in because I think yeah. it makes the crowd that might be a little stiff yeah. um, open up a little bit more. And we can tell because we're kind of in the same business mm -hmm. of what you're trying to do. 
and I love it. So I just want to kudos to you. Thank Some you. of those charity events, you know, they're, they're, you, they're formulaic, and yeah. you really shake it up. So um, you're a great MC. That's why we get asked to host them, right? Yeah. Because the people putting on those events know full well that they are putting on a stale charity event. <laughs> And that's not what we do here. That's not Monday's Dark. Monday's Dark is off the cuff. It's adult. It's, listen. And at the end of the day, what's my job? My job is to get you to open up your pocketbook right. and make a contribution to whatever wonderful cause we're all gathering for to support. Mm -hmm. So yes, when they auction off a dog on the live auction and I make the joke, congratulations, you're now gonna have to replace all of the carpeting in your home. <laughs> yeah. So your $15,000, $20,000 live auction bid on a golden doodle was great. Now you're spending <laughs> another 50K on hardwood in your home. It sort of takes the edge off and people feel as though they don't have to be so stuffy, right? Like you want, I, I'm just a firm believer if people are comfortable in their environment, they're going to be more willing to give and support the cause than if they feel like they have to put on a face, mm. uh, you know, they're in their tux or their suit and it's like, eh. yeah, no, yeah. that's not who I am. And I think that's why I get asked to do these events because they know full well that I am going to crack a joke to somebody in the crowd that I may know <laughs> and hopefully they, they write a bigger check because of it. Yeah. Do you ever surprise yourself with anything that... Oh yeah. You end up saying? Yeah, and I regret it. <laughs> yeah, and that's- Things just come yeah. out. And we live stream all of our Monday's Dark events, right? And so I had to tell Miranda Lopez, who handles all of our social and our streaming, I was like, the minute the show is over, delete the stream. <laughs> because in today's day and age, I don't want people pulling something I right. said out of context that will come back to bite me later on. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, everything we do is in jest. It's, it's, it's quick, it's, it's goofy. But it all comes from a genuine place that we're just here to support this organization and help. The last thing I want to do is say something that would offend somebody in a way that would turn them off to a point where they get offended. That's yeah. definitely not what we do. We definitely push the envelope. Uh, but that's why we delete after we're done. <laughs> My favorite was there was an auction going and Mark was like, um, to all the guys, you know, everyone whip out your phones and, you, yeah. you know, let's start bidding, open up your browser, close your private browser. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, you guys all know you have one. And I was like, I don't know why it made me laugh so hard. Because you have one too. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> that's why. Yeah. yeah. I was laughing so hard. I was just like, because there was a silence. That yeah. Like, yeah. Then they were like. It was kind of like a Gitchy guy joke where you throw the grenade and you wait for the punchline to end, but everybody kind of, oh, now I know why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Good One stuff. of the best compliments I ever got in that same regard was the governor's black tie. Yeah. You know, th those guys do such incredible work with uh, they do. their organization, yeah. right? The Olympia companies. And when you hear governor's black tie, that sort of screams a certain <laughs> vibe. Uh -huh. And it's not at all this high-end, you know, stuck-up mm -hmm. event. There's usually a country star that yep. comes out and performs and everybody's in hats and chaps and boots. And <laughs> so I, you know, the reason why they keep asking me back now is because I've sort of helped elevate the casual side of this event that raises so much money. Mm -hmm. And the minute they feel at ease, man, I wore a huge cowboy hat to the last one and I made a joke, somebody give me a thousand bucks and you can have my hat. In real time on the spot, somebody called out, I'll give you a thousand bucks and I tossed right. my hat. So uh, there's no rhyme or reason. No. The whole point is just to help and give back. And yeah. if we can laugh about it and have a good time, even better. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you. Yeah, we appreciate everything that you do for the Las Vegas community. We appreciate you welcoming us into your space. The space. This, hey, into this, the space. This place is yours whenever you want it. Okay, good so to know. come on good back and please. I think I'm putting it out there publicly. When you celebrate your 200th episode, you should do it live in our big room with a with an audience in attendance, and I mean, we could throw a big party for you. We've got five be. weeks to prepare. I know. Let's well, go. maybe we just <laughs> take go. a break for a week, and then we move it into the new year. Maybe 200 could be in the new year. Whatever you guys want, we're here for you. I'm just like, like I said, honored that you took the time to come to to our home and you brought your show here. It's really a cool moment for us, so thanks. Thank you. Listen, it's been such a joy chatting with you. We don't get to do it as often because we're all busy, yeah, right? So just good. next time we want to catch up, we'll just say, come on the podcast. Let's do it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, thanks everyone for uh, watching and listening to Vegas Revealed. Um, we hope everyone has a good Thanksgiving. Absolutely. And we'll see you back for 196. We got bills to pay. Let's take a holiday.